Breath of the Wild has already been out for 3 years now, and a lot of us already know a ton about the inner workings of this game, such as all the flashy combat maneuvers, locations of the best items in the game, and even a great understanding of this game's physics system to help them in their adventure. But out of everything a player may have learned about this game over the last few years, one of the biggest misconceptions that tends to be a mystery for most players has to deal with this game's shield system, and what exactly the little numbers that reside by them actually mean. You see, unlike the numbers by the weapons and armor, which clearly reflect the weapon's damage output and the armor's defense level respectively, the game never once explains to the player exactly what the shield numbers mean. Considering that all shields in this game work the exact same way, by blocking 100% of all incoming damage, most players just assume that this number must simply mean the shield's durability stat, which is in fact not the case at all. So I thought to myself, simple. What better way to find the answer to this question than by looking in the official guidebook for Breath of the Wild? And to my surprise, there it is on page 290. <clears throat> the attack power of a shield with the parry command. This has nothing to do with the efficiency of perfect guards, it's a simple measure of the offensive power of a shield when used as a weapon with the parry move. Now this is very wrong. The only shields that do damage in this game by parrying are the Lionel shields, and even then, the number by them has nothing to do with the damage it outputs. It really beats me why the official guidebook for this game would spread such misinformation. But then again, this is also coming from the same people who said that a green rupee is worth 5. So uh, thanks piggyback. <laughs> So, since both the base game and the official guide are incompetent on explaining what these numbers mean, I took it to myself to actually do some research both in-game and out to finally solve this so-called mystery once and for all. And as it turns out, these numbers actually have a lot more meaning than one may think. For starters, I'm going to start calling these numbers by their proper name, the Shield Guard Stat, as that's what they are referred to as when you find one of the upgraded versions later in the game. So, as it turns out, I found that the shield guard stat affects a total of three different properties of the shield itself. It's parrying, blocking, and it's resistance. The first two are quite simple to explain, but I'll save the resistance property for last, as it's a bit more complicated. So, the first thing the shield guard stat can affect is the capability of disarming an opponent upon performing a perfect parry against their attack. This can only be done when the shield's guard is higher than the damage output of the enemy that you are facing. Let's take one of the red moblins you can find off the plateau for an example, which natively have a damage output of 2, plus the 9 point clubs that they hold, which bring it up to 11. If I try to parry one of their attacks with a wooden shield, which has a guard of 2, the parry will simply stagger the opponent, while his weapon will stay in his hand. But if I perform this move with a mind's eye shield, which has a guard of 18, the parry will cause the moblin's weapon to fly out of his hand, leaving him far more vulnerable than he was before. This is very similar to another property that the shield guard stat can affect, which is its blocking capability. Similar to how a shield with a higher guard than the enemy's damage output can cause them to be disarmed upon parrying, simply blocking an enemy's attack without parrying in the same scenario will cause an enemy to be staggered, unlike with lower rated shields where they will continue to hit right through it. Like how we can see this blue bacoblin constantly smack through a weaker shield like a wooden one, while a stronger one like the Lionel variants will cause him to be knocked backwards upon hitting it. But the only thing is, these special characteristics only apply to the normal enemy types in this game, such as bacoblins, moblins, and luzarfos. Enemies like Lionels cannot be disarmed by using a perfect parry, and Hinoxes will still be able to knock a player back regardless of what type of shield they are using. However, the final characteristic that the shield guard stat can affect, its resistance, is a bit more complicated to explain than the other two, as it has to deal with some behind the scenes math that relates to how the shield itself takes damage upon being beaten. First off, I just want to clarify that this is not its durability stat, as that is a completely separate and hidden value each shield has that is unrelated to the shield's guard stat. For an example, the Wooden Shield has a Guard of 2, but a Durability of 12, while the Royal Guard Shield has a Guard of 70, but a measly 14 Durability. I'll include a link to all the Shield Guard ratings and Hidden Durability stats in the description below, for those of you interested. But the biggest misconception about the Durability stat is that every hit to the player's shield consumes one Durability point, which is not the case at all. In actuality, it's the shield guard stat that determines how many durability points will be taken to the shield upon getting struck, with the minimum cap being 1. 
For an example, let's take two different shields with different guard stats and test them against the Red Hinox, whom has an attack output of 24. The first shield, which is an emblazoned shield with a durability of 12 and a guard of 3, can only take a measly 3 hits before shattering. Meanwhile, a Savage Lionel shield with a guard buff of 78 and a durability of 20 takes a full 20 hits to break, which is the same as the number of durability points of the shield. So after doing this, I came to the conclusion that having a lower shield guard than the enemy's attack power would cause a shield to take more than one durability point away upon a strike, while having a higher guard than the enemy will lower this number all the way down to 1. Except there is one slight problem to this. When testing the Syria again against the same Red Hinox, using an emblazoned shield with a durability of 12 and a guard of 18, which is lower than the Hinox's attack power of 24, the shield was still able to break in a solid 12 hits. It was then when I knew that there must have been some other hidden math behind this, to be able to explain exactly how the durability is calculated. But after dozens upon dozens of more tests with different shields, I was unable to crack this code. Until I stumbled across a GameFAQ thread by user Thrasher7170, which I'll link in the description, that provided an accurate formula used to calculate the way shields take durability in this game. So you math fans are probably going to love this. In order to calculate durability loss, the game uses a rule system to check how many points will be taken out of the shield. If A, the attack power, is less than or equal to 10 plus G, the shield guard, then the shield only loses 1 point of durability upon strike. However, if the attack power is greater than 10 plus the shield guard, then the shield will lose more than 1 point of durability. So going back to the Hinox example, if we plug in the attack output of 24 in place of the A, and we plug in the emblazoned shield's guard of 18 in place of G, the 18 adds to the 10 to create 28, which is greater than the rating of 24, which is why the shield was only taking 1 point of durability per hit, when I originally thought it would take more. So theoretically, any shield with a guard of 14 or higher will work the same against this enemy, as the only other stat that would make them differ is their base durability. But if we plugged in the values of the first shield we tested against the Hinox, which had a guard of 3, it falls under the second equation, meaning that it will take more than 1 damage per hit. And the way that this is calculated is by using the following chart provided in the same GameFAQ thread. By subtracting 10 plus the guard rating away from the enemy's output, and matching it up with its corresponding value. So in this example, the 24 base damage minus 10 minus 3 will equal 11, which the chart tells us that the durability done to the shield upon each hit will be 4, which explains why it was able to break in a mere 3 hits in the past example. For those of you who want a better understanding of this chart without having to memorize it, it basically equates to 1 extra point of durability loss for every 5 extra points of enemy damage, so it's really not as complicated as it looks. But other than that, that's basically everything to discuss when it comes to the hidden characteristics of shields in this game. Although there's a lot of math behind that last one, it's easiest just to remember that the higher numbers help preserve a shield's durability more than the lower ones. It's the reason why a wooden shield will shatter upon a single blow from a Lionel, while a Royal Guards one can take multiple, despite having similar durabilities. But with everything that I've explained about this game's shield system today, through the parries, blocking, and the shield's resistance and durability stats, I hope this helped clear up one of Breath of the Wild's most confusing systems, and hopefully, you'll be able to use this information well in your future playthroughs of this game. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I almost never do informational based videos like this on the channel, but if you like what you saw today, definitely let me know if you would like to see more, because honestly, videos like this are quite fun to make. If you're new to the channel, feel free to stick around by dropping a like and subscribing, as I have plenty of other interesting ideas to discuss in the weeks coming. Also, a huge shout out to my amazing patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel. If you would like to help me out here for as little as a dollar a month, all the info can be found in the description below. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.